The Unicap AKR knee resurfacing system from Arthrosurface is comprised of two components. The femoral component is a cobalt chrome articular bearing surface with a titanium taper post that is connected via Morse taper. The cemented tibial component is an ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene with interdigitations on the bottom for cement fixation. We will prepare the tibial side first by making a portal a little larger than a standard ACL portal. Select a template and place it over the defect. You must leave a 5 mm bone wall between the anterior tibia and the template, and also the medial wall and the medial side of the template. There is a selection of tibial templates with different curvatures in the anterior posterior and medial to lateral planes, which you place over the defect and choosing the one that gives you the best recreation of the tibial plateau curvatures in both planes. Attach the template to the tibial drill guide and reinsert creating a stab incision on the distal tibia for insertion of the bullet. Align the guide arm anterior posterior and insert the 2 mm drill tip guide pin through the bullet and exit at the center of the tibial template. Remove the bullet and the tibial guide. Advance the tibial pilot drill over the guide wire and through the tibial plateau. Be sure to avoid reaming into the femoral condyle and remove the hardware. Advance the introducer until the proximal tip of the introducer is flush with the cartilage. The next step is to insert the threaded blade stop, which will become the depth stop for the tibial cutter, so that we can create the optimal socket depth for the implant. The blade stop is inserted over the introducer until the laser marks on the driver handle are aligned with the laser mark on the introducer shaft. Proper placement of the blade stop is when the tip of the introducer is flush with the cartilage on the plateau and the laser marks are aligned in the driver shaft. Remove the driver and the introducer, leaving the blade stop in place. The tibial cutter shaft is then inserted through the blade stop and the tibial cutter blade is inserted into the blade holder. The longer longitudinal slot should be facing posterior on the blade. Advance the tibial cutter swivel up and through the center of the blade. Rotate the shaft 90 degrees and pull back. To lock the blade, advance the yellow slide locking hub up and over the hub and release the lock. Remove the tibial blade holder. Begin counterclockwise rotation of the blade to normalize the blade to the tibial plateau and then clockwise rotation will cut the cavity. Continue until the blade is stopped by the proximal end of the blade stop. Insert the tibial trial into the portal and place over the blade. Confirm the orientation of the tibial trial so that it is flush or slightly recessed medial to lateral and anterior to posterior. If the trial is proud, leave the trial in place and using the wrench, attach it to the blade stop and a 90 degree rotation will lower the blade stop by one millimeter.
reattach the drill, ream to the new depth, again stopping on the top of the blade stop, and confirm the fit of the tibial trial. When satisfied, remove the trial. Remove the blade and tibial cutter shaft. Preparation of the tibial side is now complete. Turning our attention to the femoral side, place the femoral drill guide on the distal femur. Pushing on the handle will deploy the stabilizing feet medial to lateral. Establish four points of contact which will establish perpendicularity to the distal femur. Advance the femoral guide wire to the laser mark. Remove femoral drill guide leaving the guide wire in place. Advance the femoral centering shaft over the guide wire to the depth where the laser mark line is at the height of the original articular surface of the femoral condyle. Using the medial to lateral contact probe over the centering shaft, place the contact probe on the medial side and record the number which in this case the number is 3.0 millimeters. Placing it on the lateral side or medial to the condyle, the recorded number is 2.5 millimeters. Remove the medial to lateral contact probe and insert the anterior to posterior contact probe and repeat for anterior posterior curvature. Here the anterior number is 6.0 millimeters and for the posterior number is recorded as 5.5 millimeters. Determine the average anterior posterior number, in this case 6.0 millimeters and determine the average medial to lateral number which is 3.0 millimeters. If in between sizes, round to the larger size. The femoral surface reamer is selected based on the medial lateral value, in this case a 3.0 millimeter reamer. Ream over the centering shaft until the reamer bottoms out or stops on the centering shaft. Remove the centering shaft. Select the proper guide block based on the mapping point selected from the anterior posterior curvature. In this case, a 6.0 millimeter guide block. Insert into the femoral guide handle and again push on the handle to deploy the medial to lateral stabilizing feet. The guide orientation should follow the cam of the femoral condyle. Insert the pin sleeves into the guide block and confirm that all four points of contact on the drill guide are on the femur and insert the small threaded pins precisely to the laser mark. Using the Jacobs chuck as a drill stop here is an effective measure. Remove the pin sleeves and the femoral guide. Proper pin location is when the small threaded pins are at or within a millimeter outside of the central reamed circle. When satisfied with the placement, remove the central pin. Select the reamer based on the medial to lateral mapping point and ream down until the guide pin is caught into the window. The depth of cut here is approximately two to three millimeters and repeat for the anterior circle as well. Choose the proper femoral sizing trial. It is marked P for posterior and insert it into the prepared space.
Again, check that you are flush or slightly recessed at all edges, anterior posterior and medial lateral. Once fit is confirmed, we begin preparation for the taper post. Advance the taper post drill to the laser mark and leave in place. Reinsert the 2 mm femoral pin and securely seat it with the mallet. Rotate and remove the trial handle. Advance the femoral step drill over the pilot drill. It will automatically stop on the taper post drill. Advance the tap. The tap should be stopped when it is flush with the back of the taper post drill within the cannulation of the tap. Remove the tap. Remove the drill. Insert the taper post implant into the trial handle Morse taper and advance over the guide wire. Dock the taper post implant and handle onto the sizing trial. The screwdriver is inserted through the handle and is advanced until the depth stop on the shaft stops at the back of the trial handle. Remove trial handle and remove the guide pins. A placement gauge can be used to check the depth of the taper post in relation to the femoral trial to ensure that the taper post will engage onto the articular component. Remove the sizing trial. Next is the tibial implantation. Advance the suture retriever through the tibial hole and out through the plateau. Retrieve the implant sutures and pull the final tibial implant into the prepared socket. Using a slot driver, you can control the orientation from the underside of the tibial implant. Keeping traction on the sutures, we assemble the arthrosurface cement ejector, which is done by putting low viscosity cement through the funnel and into the syringe. Insert the yellow plunger so that it is flush with the back of the syringe and insert the syringe assembly into the ejector handle. Attach the drive rod to the handle and attach this to the handle using the J-lock locking system. The sutures are pulled through the glue shield and the glue shield is inserted into the distal tibial drill hole. With one hand on the handle and the other on the power drill, pressurize the cement to the underside of the implant. While backing out the tibial hole, you should see the implant rise 1 to 2 millimeters. And then press on the top of the implant using that force to interdigitate the cement into the cancellous bone of the tibial plateau. Continue to inject the cement and remove the cement shield. Open the articular component for the femoral side. Confirm the orientation is correct with the P laser mark indicating posterior and apply P-sized amounts of cement to the underside of the implant. Use the impactor and mallet to seat the final implant and remove any excess cement and all osteophytes. The arthrosurface unicap procedure is now complete.